Hey there everyone, this is Danielle with a review of Ukulele. Uh, you may remember I already did a first thoughts video on this game for the Switch. Uh, I'll probably link to that if I remember. Hopefully I'll remember to put a link to it. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, so I have now played most of the game. I have nearly completed it. Um, like a lot of other collectathon games, you don't need to do everything to complete it. Uh, but you need to do quite a large amount. There are, uh, if I look at the totals here, you can see that there are 145 pages, uh, and you need 100 of them, uh, which is about 70%, I think. <laughs> 100 on 145. Yeah, that's, that's about 70%, whereas uh, for, say, Mario 64, you needed 70 out of 120, which is about 60%. Uh, for Mario Galaxy, you needed exactly half. Etc. Uh, whereas for Odyssey, you only need like a tenth of what's in the game in order to complete the story. Um, so it, it is a bit more than in those games is required to complete this one, but I don't think it's a big deal. Um, I don't really remember how much stuff there was in Banjo in the Banjo Kazooie games you needed to get, but maybe it was around the same amount. So <laughs> it's probably fine. Um, so basically, yeah, it's a platformer that is very similar in execution to the Banjo-Kazooie games. Uh, the main difference, I would say, is that everything is a lot bigger, basically. Uh, much like Odyssey, they've made the levels very, very large and put more things in them. If you look at the totals menu here, if I scroll across to the actual levels, uh, here's the first one, Tribal Stack Tropics, you can see that there's 25 pages to be collected and 200 quills. Uh, that's basically, like, in um, the levels in the original Banjo-Kazooie, you had 10 jiggies and 100 notes, so yeah, they've essentially doubled that. And then some. Um, so the levels are all much, much bigger, uh, which uh, unfortunately means that in order to keep the total throughout the same, even the levels are bigger and have more stuff in them, there are actually fewer levels in this game. There are only five, actually, which seems kind of low. Um, having a total of five worlds rather than, you know, uh, Odyssey had about seven, had 15 regular worlds and then some post-game content. Um, well, 14. 14 regular, then some post-game. Uh, and, you know, uh, the original Banjo-Kazooie I think had 10 worlds and Tui had nine, so five seems a bit small. Um, and I think that's a little questionable, but, um, the problem isn't so much that there's a, few, a small number of levels, it's that while they're very big levels, similar to Odyssey's Kingdoms, where there's a lot of stuff in them, a lot to explore, it's not really built to help you do that, if that makes sense. Uh, I'll head into Travel Sack Tropics to give you a bit of a look. Uh, it's over this way. Here it is. Uh, you'll notice another problem I have with the game once I do this, which is that you get a lot of loading screens in this game. Uh, it might just be the Switch version, because I don't remember this happening when I played the game of Steam, but I didn't play it very much, so I might just might not have really noticed. Um, it does seem to, to load for a lot longer than some other games I could mention. Odyssey. <laughs> Which is a lot faster to go between kingdoms and stuff, and doesn't require you to travel between them as much. Because there's more stuff in each one in Odyssey. There's, you know, like... 30 to 80 moons or whatever in each kingdom, rather than 25. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I think the loading is a bit worse in this game is basically what I'm saying. Uh, it also has those little tips that come up that aren't very well randomised, and it doesn't really choose useful tips much. I've already done all the quickfire quizzes in the game, and it keeps telling me that they're coming, so it's not helpful to tell me that. So yeah, here's Travel Stack Tropics. The big problem I have with this game, because the levels are so very, um, expansive, you really need something to help you navigate them. Um, Odyssey, as I've probably shown off a lot of times in, in that game, it has a map. Uh, every kingdom has a map, and you can warp to particular parts of the kingdom instantly by opening up that map. In this game, pressing plus or minus, you, you don't get a map, you get the same pause screen either way. And Despite the kingdoms being very, very large, it's basically, you basically have to go through them manually. Uh, you have this rolling move, uh, which is quite fast. It's not as good as the rolling in Odyssey, which is amazing. Uh, for one thing, you have this little power bar here that you have to watch. And for another thing, 
Uh, it, it's just hard to control. Um, it goes all over the place, especially when you try to jump. Uh, it's a lot harder to control than the Talon Trot, which is the move it's based off from Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, which is a bit sad. Um... So yeah, basically the problem, the main problem I have with this game, the levels are really, really big, and they're really hard to make your way through, because a lot of them look very samey. Uh, Travel Stack Tropics maybe isn't the best demonstration of this. It's probably the best of the five levels, because, um, I don't know, it's, it's got a lot of different stuff to it, I guess. Uh, I would say the one that's hardest to navigate is the fourth world, uh, which I might go to in a moment just to show you what it's like. Uh, which can also demonstrate another problem we have with this game, actually. <laughs> Many problems with this game. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is a bit of a puzzle here. Uh, there's a lot of timed stuff in this game, actually, which is another problem, uh, to be honest. Uh, because you can see this one has a timer, uh, which is very good. It's nice to have a timer. Uh, but a lot of things are timed without showing you any kind of timer. Uh, for example, when I ate that berry back there, it gave me the ability to spit ice. It's now worn off, but there was no on-screen indication of how long it would last. <sighs> Which makes that really annoying and difficult, as you might expect. Uh, where's that last one down here? There we go. Um, so yeah, um, basically... There's problems with this game communicating things to you, like how to get to certain places and how long your various power-ups last. Uh, there's the berries you can you can eat, but yeah, I have a hundred pages pages now, so yeah, I can I can go do the final boss now, but I won't just yet. Um, so yeah, um, those are the main problems I have. The game doesn't doesn't really broadcast well whether things are going to wear out or not. Uh, there's another one I can demonstrate if we head back out of the level. Uh, basically, you have the ability to eat berries, to spit those berries. You can also eat some other things, like cannonballs, which makes Yuka heavier and you aren't affected by wind, for example. Uh, you can also eat, like, fireflies to start glowing to, go, to get through dark areas. It's, it's pretty clever. Uh, but unfortunately, the problem with all of those powers, and the berries, is that none of them have any on-screen indication of how long they'll last, and they're all time-limited. So, it's essentially a completely arbitrary how long you're going to have it working, and it's just completely, like, bad. <laughs> it's not good. Um, also, yeah, you can see the loading in this game is pretty bad. There we go. Okay, so, uh... The hub world here, Hivory Towers, it's fairly similar, I suppose, to Grunty's cut, like, Grunty's Lair from the first game. All of the worlds you access through here, uh, you have to go, like, the long way around to begin with, but you can unlock shortcuts. This is one of the shortcuts up here. Uh, when you come through from the other side, you press this switch, and that opens up this shortcut. Um... So the shortcuts are good, they're good to have. Uh, I think there's another loading screen though. Uh, the hub world is actually segmented into three separate areas that need to be loaded. So there's the outside part that includes the shipwreck, uh, shipwreck creek and also the first area of um, Hivory Towers. Then there's Hivory Towers Hub B, which contains levels 2 and 3. And then there's Hivory Towers Hub C, basically, which contains levels 4 and 5. So it's, it's a hassle. Uh, to have to go to all those different places, um, and to get so many loading screens in the hub, I don't think, uh, Banjo-Kazooie really had that problem. Um, and this is still running off basically a cartridge, so it's kind of weird that the loading is different. Uh, I'm not using a disc or anything, I'm using, you know, an SD card, which is essentially the same medium. Um, I mean, no, it's not quite the same as, you know, a ROM cartridge, but it's similar. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the cannonball back there. You can see, uh, Yuka turned, like, like black for a little while, uh, which that's that's the cannibal effect. But there's no indication on screen of how long it'll last. So when you're trying to do like a tricky bit of jumping around with fans around, you have no idea how long much time you've got before this will wear off and you'll fall, uh, which is a problem. Um, and it's just basically a problem that's endemic to the entire game because so many of the power ups are time limited things. Uh, you've got the cannonballs, you've got the honey, you've got uh, let me think. <laughs> you got the various types of berries, uh, which let you shoot stuff. Oh, also, that's weird. Um, you can, when you've got, like, berries, you can shoot in first-person mode. 
you activate first person by pressing the left stick. Uh, which is really strange, because most games have you activate it by pressing the right stick. Because uh, that's, you know, the camera control stick. It's very weird. Uh, anyway, I'm going to head towards the third level, I guess. Uh, to demonstrate yet another complaint I have about this game. Um, this room is nice, but it doesn't do very much, which I think is a bit sad. Uh, you learn a new ability here, basically, and then you use it to unlock that door over there. There is a page you can get for going through this maze over here, but it's not very interesting. Uh, the combat's not great, also. Um, a lot of enemies take multiple hits, and you don't have a very wide array of attacks. Uh, you've got, um, basically this spin, and then you've got this air attack, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you, you've got a ground pound move as well, I suppose, but it's not great. Okay, uh, these things are another problem. You can see that little green mouse thing. Uh, that's a grapple point, uh, which you can press A to grapple to, but you can see there's no indication on screen of whether you're going to hit that grapple point or not. Uh, and you can't, like, activate, like, a homing in thing like you can with Cappy, where you can... You know, throw Cappy, miss, and then home in, and you're fine. It's just, essentially, you press A, and maybe you'll get grappled, and maybe you won't. And I don't think there's anything showing, like, a difference between the point you're going to grapple to and the one you're not going to grapple to, for example. So, it's, it's a big problem, I think. Thankfully, these grapple points essentially only show up in this hub and... In a couple of in a couple of the parts of the hub, and in that level. They don't show up in the later levels for some reason. Um, so they're not too much of a problem, but, yeah, again, it's the game really not giving enough information to play things properly, in my opinion. Um, which, yeah, it's basically a problem endemic to the whole game. Um, uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, quills? That it is useful to get all the quills. Getting every quill in a world will get you a pagey. There's way more quills than you need to buy all the moves, but you still want to get all of them because you get a pagey for getting all of them, which didn't happen with notes in Banjo Kazooie, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I have bought all the moves, and I still have, you know, hundreds of quills to spare. So there's, there's way more than you need. It's not hard to get enough to buy all the moves. Uh, which is fortunate, because you need all the moves to do lots of stuff. Uh, what else? Basi basically, the rolling-based moves suck. Um, rolling, it's, it's not good. Uh, this thing is not good. Uh, that, that's like a shield, basically, but you can only use it while you're rolling, which means your controls are terrible for precise movement, and you're pretty expected to use that in precise movement areas, so it's, it's, it's not good. Um, oh my goodness. Oh, also, these, these aren't good. A lot of things in this game are not good, and I'm probably going to be ranting quite a bit. Uh, this is, this system is called Tonics. Um, basically, you can you unlock these different uh, enhancements to the game that improve various stuff, but you can only ever activate one of them at a time. Uh, no matter how many you've got and how far you're in the game, you, you only get one of these, and these are things that it would be useful to have multiple enabled. For example, uh, Porter here it lets you scoop up quills by uh, pressing A to lick them up, like the grapple points, uh, which is great. But this one also, this one, Hunter, it makes a noise happen when there's like uh, a hidden item nearby, such as, you know, that last lousy quill, for example. So it would be useful to have both of those on. But you can't. You have to have exactly one of these things on. And some of them are actually just cosmetic, and other ones are very useful upgrades. Uh, for example, Baller I usually have on, it makes Lutch roll more, it makes the makes rolling take up less of the power bar, basically. Uh, and then you have things like 64-bit here, which is completely cosmetic and useless. All it does is put this filter over the whole game, which is really ugly, and it doesn't it doesn't look like it's 64-bit, it just looks like it's, it's bad. <laughs> um, I don't know why they didn't, you know, make... Uh, um, a 64-bit looking model of Yuka and Laylee, like in, um, in Odyssey, where you can get a 64, like a, a, not a 64-bit, well, yes. You can get a Mario 64 version of Mario, and it looks like Mario 64 Mario, and it looks great. This game looks bad, and when you enable it, you can't have any of these other upgrades enabled. Uh, I think you should have maybe been able to buy some of these upgrades permanently, using some of your quills. Uh, since there are so many extra quills, it would be a good thing to do with them. Um, 
And yeah, um, I'm also not a fan of the whole power bar mechanic to begin with. Uh, another game that used that was Link Between Worlds. I did not like Link Between Worlds. Uh, in the original Banjo Kazooie, things that used up like a finite that needed to be limited, like flying and invincibility, have separate resources. Uh, you had red feathers for flying. You had yellow feathers for uh, in, for invincibility. You had um various kinds of eggs you could spit in different directions yeah. as an attack. Uh, here, it's that that's basically the same thing as your egg spit, the sonar move. Uh, but all of those things use up the same power bar instead, uh, which doesn't work as well. I think uh, it does mean that you can safely use any move without wasting, you know, a, a consumable resource that you might need to get more of. Uh, but it also means, you know, you can't use another move if you run out by rolling a lot, say. So you don't want to, like, roll into a dangerous situation and then need to use this attack, for example, because they both require the power bar. Uh, so I had similar problems with Link Between Worlds, because you can't, say, switch from using arrows to using your boomerang, or bombs, or whatever, because they all use the same bar, and if you run out of one, you run out of all of them. Um, which is just, it's a problem. Anyway, I'm going to head over to Capital Casino because I think that's the most map-needing level so I can demonstrate the problem. Uh... Here we go. Uh... Yeah, so there's no, like, fast travel through the overworld. There's a couple of um, shortcuts that I mentioned earlier, but essentially you do have to walk to each level when you want to switch levels. You can't just walk to the Odyssey and say, take me to this level, please. That's not a huge deal. I mean, that's how Mario 64 works, that's how Banjo kazooie works, that's how a lot of games work. Uh, but because the hub world here is quite big and not that much fun to navigate, it, it becomes a bit of a problem in my opinion. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, I think the game itself is is fun. Uh, I like a lot of the challenges that you go through to get pages. Um, 25 is a lot less than you have in Odyssey, but there aren't ever ones just out in the open. You always have to do some kind of challenge, so... It, it works out to a decent amount of stuff to be doing, uh, so that's not a problem. Um... I do wish the pages had names, like in Odyssey, uh, so that they sort of cap off what you've done, um, because I think that's that's useful to be able to identify them, basically. If you look at the guides and stuff for this game, it's just got a list of... like a numeric list of pages, and it doesn't have names for any of them, so it's hard to tell, did I get that one or not, because there's no way of verifying. I mean, yeah, like, um... In a game like Mario 64, you, you know which star is which, and when you pause and look at the menu, you can see which ones you've got. Uh, in this game, you just know you have, you know, uh, 8 out of 25 pages, and you don't know which ones they are. Um, so yeah, this is Capital Casino, uh, which I, lo I love the idea, I love casino-themed levels. Uh, there's some really nice ones in Sonic games, for example. Uh, but this one... It's basically one really big room, and it's it's just really hard to navigate. Um... Because you're, you know, you're usually wandering around on the ground floor. We head on down there. Uh, and you need to go to certain landmarks quite a bit in order to do various things in this level. Uh... Uh, and it's hard to find those landmarks because of the way the level is designed. It's just like a bunch of tiny corridors down the bottom here, and there's no overarching map you can use to make it easier. Uh, and it's just, it's just a problematic design, basically. If this had a map, then you could, you know, pause, look at your map and say, okay, I want to get to, uh, I don't know, Dr. Puzzle's laser, I have to go this direction, and that would be a lot simpler, but as it is, you just have to wander around uh, trying to find the right spot because the level is so expansive and doesn't give you a good indication of where things are. Uh, another problem, you can see there's a ukulele, like a big picture of ukulele over there. Um, if you look over there, there's another big picture of ukulele, which I can't quite see from here. But there he is. There it is. So opposite sides of the of the casino both have a picture of Yuka and Laylee, so if you're trying to identify, okay, so I'm near the picture of Yuka and Laylee, you could be on opposite sides. <laughs> so yeah, you, you can see it, it's just, it, it's kind of a maze, and it's a bit of a problem, I think, that it's been designed this way. 
Um, because it's just very difficult to find the things you're looking for. Hmm. Anyway, um, what else, what else? Uh, I don't really like how empty the levels become. Uh, if you've played, uh, you know, Mario 64, or the first Banjo-Kazooie, um, or actually any Banjo-Kazooie, there's always a whole bunch of collectibles around, uh, even after you've gone through the level. Uh, in most of, in um, Banjo-Kazooie, like, the, the actual jiggies disappear, but there's still other collectibles. There's stuff like feathers, and, um, notes, and stuff like that. Uh, in this game, the only, like, things you can pick up are quills and pages. There's a couple of other things, I guess. But everything is a permanent collectible. And you can't, like, nothing respawns like the coins do in the Mario games. So, once you've been through, you know, an area once, you've pretty much swept it out, and there's pretty much nothing to do after that. Um, and because you have to keep going around and looking for more stuff to do to find all the pages, um, you end up just really big, really empty areas that aren't that interesting. Uh, I think they should have had some sort of respawning collectible like the Coins in Odyssey, uh, that you can get where wherever you happen to be that, I don't know, maybe you could spend that on cosmetic stuff, li like in Odyssey. Or maybe that's how you could, you know, make the tonics permanent or whatever, is by playing the game a lot and collecting those, because then you know, you've played a lot, you deserve, like, a help of some kind, like having the ability to be invisible for longer, that sort of thing. Uh, but, yeah, it's just not like that. Every collectible in the game is... Hello. <laughs> is a is a permanent collectible. Um, I'm not sure how many I have here, actually. But, yeah, um, having, having temporary collectibles is good, because it means that the area continues being interesting after you get those temporary collectibles, whereas having only permanent ones is, is bad, because everything becomes empty. Uh, of course, on the flip side, having a collectible that's temporary that requires you to keep getting it, but like in Banjo, the original Banjo-Kazooie, the way the notes worked was they respawned when you left, but instead of getting every note you ever got, you actually got a high score based on how many you got in that world in one life. Uh, it was really annoying. Um, so that wasn't good either, but making everything permanent and, you know, making the world empty as a result because you've collected everything just isn't fun. Uh, it should have, like, a ghost page or whatever that rewards you in some way, but there's no, uh, ana there's no analogue to the, the coins in Odyssey because there's nothing, uh, in this game that works that way that you could buy with them. Um, but they should be, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, I think the sonar is really hard to use correctly in battle. Uh, you can't really aim it very well. Uh, unlike Cappy, it doesn't, like, home in on things when it's used. Uh, it also doesn't actually do any damage. Like, it just stuns things. That's okay, though, I suppose. Uh, there are certain enemies you have to actually use the sonar to stun them, and then you can actually hurt them, but it's still annoying. Um... What else, what else, what else? Uh, as you may have noticed, there is a flying move in this game. Uh, you get this near the end, it pretty much trivializes most of the platforming. Um, I feel like it's a little overpowered. Um, but I suppose you do get it near the end, so it's not a big problem. Um, but, but it, it's not great. Uh, it's a little powerful. <laughs> Uh, I also don't like a lot of the mini games. actually. Uh, here's one here. You're supposed to ride this minecart. Basically, you're supposed to collect all the gems as you go. Uh, this design is silly, too. You can see... Um, oh, he didn't do it this one. I oh, know he will. So he says you need to know the controls. Uh, if you say yes or no, he'll give you one line of dialogue that tells you either the controls or, okay, let's go, you don't need the controls. So... What's the point of asking? Why don't I just say what the controls are and save some time? <laughs> so yeah, you get the idea of this. It's not its not very fun to control, in my opinion. Um, you do have to, like, boost around and stuff. It's not like in Donkey Kong Country, where it's basically just jumping with good timing gets you everything. There's a bunch of other stuff going on, and it's, it's annoying. Uh, and you want to get the gold gems as well, because they're worth more, but it's, it's a hassle. 
And taking damage makes you lose gems as well, so... Yeah, it, it's not it's not great. <laughs> also, you shoot in a straight line, but the track constantly curves, so the fact that shooting is available is just annoying. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, you can see I'm not doing well. <laughs> little ring is the end. I was supposed to get like 150 gems before I got here, so... Oh, seriously? You can get hit by that fire after going through the ring and you still lose gems. Oh my god. Yeah, so the Kartos minecart minigame is not good. Um, that has a lot of problems. Uh, also, all the dialogue plays every time you talk to someone. Like, even if you've already heard it, you'll still hear the same dialogue again. Uh, I mean, that, that happens in a lot of games, but you have to talk to people more than once in this game to do stuff, so it's annoying. It's, you have to retry a lot and that sort of thing. Uh, you have, like, a high jump sort of move. Uh, that's what happens if you crouch and jump rather than, like, a backflip. You have to unlock that partway through the game, but it's pretty useful. Uh, gliding, you unlock as well. Most of the most of the moves need to be unlocked. Actually, you don't start with very much at all. Uh, um, what else can I say about this? Uh, it's, it definitely plays a lot like Banjo Kazooie. Uh, like as well as looking a lot like Banjo Kazooie, it does play very much the same, but. I feel like we've become a lot, a bit less forgiving as a, as a gaming society uh, since the N64 era, and so although this game plays very similarly, it just has problems that that game wouldn't have done because it's running on a more modern system, um, and therefore the problems it has can be fixed by using things like map systems and fast travel and etc etc, that sort of stuff. Uh, the health system's also not great, in my opinion. Uh, you can get more butterflies, as you can see, but some things do multiple butterflies worth of damage. Um, so, you really do need to get the upgrades in order to survive various things. Uh, this game's got fall damage as well, and it's like two or three butterflies depending on how far you fall or something. It's really annoying. Uh... <laughs> Also, these bees suck. You can't attack them with Yuka's whatever, but you can stun them by using the sonar, but it's annoying. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh... Oh, yeah. Um, if you come over here, uh, in water, uh, rather than rolling while you're in water, if you press the roll button, you'll instead make a bubble like this, uh, which lets you basically run around on the, on the bottom of the water. Uh, and platform basically as though you're not, not underwater, which is an interesting decision. It's kind of, kind of similar to the way uh, the Magikarp works in Odyssey, in that you basically get to ignore the air limit and play like it's not there. Uh, but swimming, like walking on the bottom of this water rather than, you know, having submarine controls is, is not as good. And you actually can't do certain moves either. Also, for some reason, that uses up a little bit of your power bar. I don't know what the point of that is, because it's going to fill up shortly after anyway. Because you're running around underwater and not using your powers. You can't actually roll while you're like this, because pressing the roll button will um, do that other thing. <laughs> it will pop the bubble, because it's the same button. Uh, but yeah, you don't really need to roll. You go fast enough without it. Um, so, yeah... Yeah, there's that. Uh, what else? what else? I don't know, this isn't... I don't know if this is a review or just like a ramble. I should, should probably have scripted this or planned it out a little bit, but I didn't. Uh... Um... Hmm... So yeah, I think this is probably like... I, lo I love the idea, but this is probably the worst level because it's so, so maze-like in its design. Uh, it's just really complicated to navigate compared to the game's other levels. And uh, got a pig there. Pig. <laughs> um, well, the other levels aren't, aren't that great to navigate either, honestly. It's just a big problem with the game overall, the way you have to navigate the levels. 
and you don't have maps and the levels are gigantic. Uh, I haven't really brought this up in the review yet, but the levels actually start smaller. Um, not a lot smaller. Um, well, some of them are a lot... Uh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they start out smaller. Um, rather than unlocking new levels um, by spending your pages, you can also spend pages on existing levels to make them bigger. You can only do that once per level, um, but it unlocks a bunch of extra stuff that you couldn't do before. It's it's kind of similar to the Moonrock thing in Odyssey, uh, where, you know, you, you do this and then a bunch of extra challenges just suddenly show up in the world. Uh, but in this one, you can do it at any time if you have enough pages, you don't have to finish the game first, and... Uh, I think it gives you a bit less than the Moonrock usually does, and... I don't think it's as good. Uh, I think this game is just not as good as Odyssey overall. <laughs> um, I think the idea of expanding the levels like that is good, but the problem is they're still, like, regardless of whether they're expanded or not, they're just really big and really hard to navigate well because of their size and, especially in the case of this level, how similar everything looks. Um, like, Travel Sack Tropics is, bit, is wide and open, so you can, you know, see... Oh, okay, so there's the place I want to go in the distance, and I'll walk over that way. Whereas this level, um, there's a lot of, like, narrow corridors and stuff that prevent you from seeing very clearly what you're doing, uh, which is a problem. Uh, I also think the bosses in this game really suck. <laughs> uh, we haven't looked at any of them, but there's a whole bunch, and... Basically, none of them are fun to fight. Um, there's one in Travel Sack Tropics that you fight by rolling up a hill and, and dodging obstacles. Uh, but the problem is, when you're rolling, your controls are not good. Um, the rolling controls are, are just... they're bad. Um, and if you get hit at all, then you start sliding down the hill and you can't keep rolling. And you hit more stuff on the way down and take more than one hit of damage, even though you only messed up once, etc, etc. Lots of problems. Uh, in, um, the second level, Glitterglaze Glacier, there's a boss where you basically have to, like, spit fire at them a lot, and they shoot out projectiles, and you just dodge them, it's not, it's not interesting. Um, yeah. The, but the bosses overall have not been fun. Hopefully the final boss is better, but I get the feeling they're prob that it's probably not. Uh, which is sad. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, the visuals are still great, um, and I, li I like the concepts of each world, it's just the execution isn't so good, uh, if you get me. <laughs> um, like, you know, you've, you've got Travel Stack Tropics, which is kind of a jungly sort of, uh, prehistoric kind of world, it's got lots of, like, temples and stuff in it, uh, and that's a lot of fun. Temples and jungles and that sort of thing, All, always good, um, and that's like a Banjo Kazooie staple. They had levels like that in both um, Kazooie and Tui, so it's a good thing to bring that back. Uh, then you've got Glitter Glacier, Glacier, which is basically just an ice level, but it's fun. Uh, the main, I guess, gimmick of that level is that there's a section called the Isometric Temple, uh, which plays like a classic isometric platformer rather than playing like a 3D platformer. Uh, the camera angle is actually fixed and all the areas are designed like you're playing uh, you know, Head Over Heels or Lumo or a game like that. It's pretty funny. Um, and I, I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, although that is where the boss is that I don't like. So, you know, whatever. Um, this is annoying. Uh, basically what you're supposed to do here is use this, uh, rev up move, which you can do while rolling. There we go. Uh, in order to smash through the glass, which is in midair. Uh, for some reason... Uh, when you get the this move, the sonar explosion, I believe it's called, it tells you it works on glass, but it doesn't. It doesn't work in any glass in the game. You have to use the rolling move instead. <laughs> um, so I don't know what's up with that. That's it's pretty annoying. Um, but yeah, the rolling move lets you smash through the glass and stuff. You don't use it much for any other reason because it's just hard to use. You gotta, like, start rolling and then hold this button down and whoosh, there you go. But yeah, the controls for rolling and doing stuff while rolling are, are not great. Um, the other move you can do while rolling is this one, the Sonar Shield, 
which is worse because, as I mentioned earlier, when, you, when you're expected to use the sonar shield, you're usually rolling in tight spaces, and the controls while you're rolling aren't nearly as tight as the controls when you're just walking because you move so much faster and you have to like turn around manually and stuff. It's not good, it would be better if you could use the Sonar Shield at any time, like the uh, Wonder Wing move from Banjo kazooie that is clearly inspired by. You could just use it like while walking. Uh, but you can't, so there you go. Uh, what else? Uh, the cloaking move? I don't like the cloaking move either, honestly. Uh, basically, yeah, you go invisible, enemies can't see you. Uh, the other reason you want to use it is that if you walk into a, like a deadly laser while cloaked, instead of getting hurt, you redirect that laser. But it's really annoying to aim uh, at stuff. Uh, I think you can use the first person mode, maybe, but you usually have to platform while you're doing it, so it doesn't, it doesn't work very well. Um... Yeah, a lot of stuff in this game just doesn't work well, and that makes me really sad because, you know, this game is the the spiritual successor to the Banjo-Kazooie games, and I really want to like it, but there's a lot of problems. Um, I haven't noticed, like, a whole lot of bugs, which is good. I've gotten stuck a couple of times, like, if you... This isn't a good way to demonstrate it, but, you know, you can get stuck between a couple of objects. Uh, and then you're in trouble because you can't get out of being stuck for a little while and like a timer might run out while you're trying to get unstuck, that sort of thing. Um, that's only happened a couple times though and that's not a huge bug. I haven't had any like crashes or anything like that. Uh, I haven't fallen through the world um, or, you know, anything severely game-breaking uh, apart from some mild, uh, you know, getting stuck on walls nonsense. Um, which wasn't a big deal, so that's okay. Um... <laughs> but yeah, um, the low, like, the, the main problem for the game, I think, are that the levels are so very big without any form of map, of map system or fast travel to help you get through them. Relative to Odyssey, which has both of those things and works really well. Uh, and basically, like, the loading times are actually a massive problem, honestly. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's just a lot of stuff that I would find questionable in the way this game has been designed, um, that I think Odyssey pretty much entirely did better on every count. So, yeah, Odyssey's the better collectathon. Um, which makes me a bit sad because this is, you know, it's an indie title. I think it's an indie title. Uh, it's, you know, it's from, I think it's, I think it's an indie title. I don't really remember, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a successor to the Banjo-Kazooie games, and it's it's got a lot of heart and creativity that's been put into it, and the writing is generally very good, and it reminds me of the Banjo-Kazooie games, when the dialogue is being good, uh, but unfortunately the, the gameplay just generally doesn't hold up. Uh, between the levels being so big and empty, because stuff doesn't respawn, and being so hard to navigate because there's no map or fast travel, and uh, the occasional like annoying platforming segment because the like controls aren't as smooth as something like Odyssey, which has all those different options for mobility. Like this game has a lot of moves, but they don't really help you uh, mobility-wise, with the exception of flying, which just cancels everything out and makes it all trivial. Uh, I guess gliding helps too, but yeah, for the most part, unlike, you know, Odyssey's moves, which have a lot of utility and can be combined in a lot of ways, moves in this game, you can't really combine them very well. Um, which I think is just, it's just a bit of a problem. You can, you know, do this, go invisible and then start rolling around, but that drains your power meter extremely fast and it's pointless, so you may as well not do that. I'm not really sure why they decided rolling had to use your power bar. Um, the Talon Trot didn't consume any resource in the in the original game, um, Banjo Kazooie, and that, that's basically the same move as the roll in this game. So it's it's annoying that they made that change. Um, there we go. Um, so yeah. I, I wanted to really love this game, 
but I can't. I, I can enjoy it. Uh, it's a fun game, and, you know, I wouldn't have kept playing up to over 100 pages if I wasn't enjoying the game at least a little bit. Um, but compared to Odyssey, it, it really pales in comparison, and compared to even Mario 64, uh, which, you know, it had, it had smaller levels and no fast travel, so it was okay because the levels were smaller. You know? Um, like, a, a game like 64 or Galaxy or whatever, that had a similar sort of collectathon feel to it. Not really Galaxy, Sunshine. A game like Sunshine or 64 that had a similar collectathon feel and the same sort of thing, it's just those games didn't really need fast travel as much because they didn't have such expansive levels. Whereas this game, the levels are really big and it's really hard to get through them and go to where you want to go because everything looks the same, especially in Capital Casino. Um, I'm actually looking at the exit now. I think it's over here. No. Um, maybe on the other side of the pool? See, I'm, I'm trying to find a certain spot in the, in the casino now and, and I can't because I don't know how to navigate through here because everything looks the same. I think this level is definitely the worst about that problem uh, compared to the rest of the game, but overall it's, it's, it is a big problem. Uh, and also, yeah, the camera sometimes gets stuck on stuff like it did just then. The camera in this game is not as good as in Odyssey. It's not like a huge problem, I wouldn't say it's on, the, on par with, you know, problems with the map, with the lack of map system and that kind of thing. But it is a problem, and it bothers me. Uh, let me think, what else? So yeah, the, 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 the map problem is, the, is definitely the hugest thing about this game that just doesn't work. Um, I think if they'd maybe made it have a few more smaller worlds rather than a small number of big ones, that might have worked out better. But I think they had some rush development or something, and they were forced to cut some worlds. Or possibly just cut some more content from each world, which would have actually made the problem worse, so, you know. Um... <sighs> yeah, back in Hyrule Towers. Um, the writing, again, is very good. You have little note messages from Capital B showing up, like in, um, like Gruntilda did in Banjo-Kazooie, and they're all really funny. Uh, although they get a bit repetitive, it's not a big deal. Like, the same sort of thing happened in Banjo-Kazooie, and eh, it's alright. You would think that, you know, they have more room in this game, and it's not voiced or anything, so... Maybe there should be some more, and maybe like a procedural generation or something would be cool, but... It's not a big deal. Uh, uh, go away. Blah, 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 blah. Um, one thing, another thing that does annoy me actually though, there are some invisible walls, like if you try to fly up to the top of the world here, you're gonna get stopped before you get onto that platform because there's just a wall there. Um, and it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that there'd just be a wall there. I feel like they could have designed this out outside area a bit better so that you don't randomly run into walls, um, unexpectedly. Um, you know, just... Like, it, like, you have a flying move, so I guess you need to adjust things a bit to make that work better. Um, you could maybe use, like, a, a visible force field sort of thing, like in Spyro or, um, Galaxy. Um, and just put it in the same spot, but make it, like, a visible thing that's stopping you from flying up there, rather than just, you know, an unexpected invisible wall. Uh, I think that would work better. Uh, nom 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 nom. Um, there's no lives in this game, which is good. Uh, much like Odyssey, they realize that lives are pointless. But it does mean that because there's no lives and no other permanent, like, no other respawning collectible in the game, it does contribute to the feeling of emptiness you really get in this game. Compared to, uh, you know, the Banjo-Kazooie games and, and Odyssey and, like, 64 and Sunshine as well. Uh, all, all of those had a lot of, like, stuff to gather throughout the game worlds that made them feel like you were achieving things, I guess. Uh, whereas this one, it, it, it does feel very empty once you've played for a while. Um, and that makes me sad. Uh, 
Uh, it really should show like a ghost or whatever of objects that you've already collected. I don't think Banjo-Kazooie did that originally, but because there's so much more stuff here, I think it's more necessary. Um, basically, like in the Mario games, like 64 and like Odyssey, it should have a ghost version of each pagey so you can say, oh, okay, so I got that pagey when you go there, rather than wondering if there was supposed to be a pagey there or not. Um, you know, just basically, oh, there's a ghost there, and maybe you can pick it up and it does something, but, you know, it's not actually a real page, it's just a reminder that you already got the page. Um, uh, that wouldn't have been hard to do, I'm pretty sure. Uh, here's Galleon Galaxy. I, I like the idea for this level the best, I think it's the most creative, probably. Uh, it's basically, it's a space-themed level, uh, but it's also a pirate-themed level. So you've got, you know, space pirates and your, your, like, like, ships and stuff, and you transform into a spaceship which looks like an old-timey pirate ship. Um, I, I think, I, I really like the concept of this world. Um, whereas Glitter Glaze is basically just Ice World, with, with no special twists, um, uh, and Capital Casino is, you know, it's a casino level, casino level, um, without any special twists, besides it being a casino level. Um, and so on, yeah. I think this one, it's, it's like the most, I, I think it's also very visually interesting. We'll see when we get in, but yeah, I, I think I like it the best out of the five. It's a shame that there are only five, um, because, yeah, like, I'm pretty sure Tui had nine. Maybe, maybe the original BK had nine and Tui had ten? I'm not sure. It's one of those. Actually, even the- they had a Game Boy Advance Banjo-Kazooie game, it was called Gruntilda's Revenge. It wasn't very good. Maybe it was Grunty's Revenge. It wasn't very good. They tried to make it play like the 3D Banjo games, but give you bas basically a top-down perspective, like in a Zelda game or a Pokemon game. The older Pokemon games, not the more recent ones. Um, and the older Zelda games, for that matter. Um, so they tried to make it play like a real Banjo-Kazooie game with 3D platforming. And that perspective, it didn't quite work. Um, but even that game had six worlds, which makes the fact that this game only has five a little questionable. <laughs> um, I mean, the worlds are much bigger in this game than they are in Grunch's Revenge, obviously, but still. <laughs> so yeah, um, Ganyan Galaxy, it's, it's really pretty. Probably the best world. It is, however, the place you get the um, shield move, which I hate, so... Go take the good with the bad, I guess. Uh, there's Dr. Puzz. I can demonstrate the spaceship transformation here, actually. It's, it's, I think it's probably the most interesting, maybe. Uh, the flower one from Travel Sack Robux is pretty boring. Uh, yeah, spaceship, spaceship. For the most part, what these do is they give you access to... Oops. No, no, I'm gonna keep using my ship. It give you access to the various elemental powers the game has. Like, normally you'd eat berries to get firepower and explosive power and stuff like that, but you can instead get the ship and use it that way. Um... So basically, in this, in this area of the game, they don't give you berries to do those same things, because you can do it with the ship. Um, which I think works out pretty nicely. Uh, there is a boss battle that you face while doing this. Again, I don't think it's very good. I don't think your controls are good enough for dodging stuff very well in this mode. Um, the ship is fun to control, but it's not fun to control while trying to dodge projectiles, if you get my meaning. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Yeah, there's a lot of creative ideas and, and concepts that went into this game, but I think the execution just leaves a lot to be desired compared to a game like Odyssey, which has, you know, it's this, a lot of the same weirdness and, and creativity and brilliance, but it also has fast travel and maps and other indicators of, of where you should be going at what time, and anything that's time limited gives you a better indication of when it's going to run out. Like, um, the bullets, the bullet bills in, um, Odyssey, right? They explode after a little while, but they start blinking a little bit before that. Um, whereas in this game, when you have, like, the, the cannonball power-up or whatever, it doesn't actually start blinking before it expires. It just expires. It plays the noise, and you're like, oh, well, I have cannonballs now. Just like that. 
I don't really understand why they did it that way when instead of making it start flashing or something, is it starting to run out? It's, it's weird. It's just a questionable decision, uh, like a lot of decisions this game makes. Um, when, when you uh, get killed in any way, you respawn at the beginning of the room you're in, which is okay in most cases. Some rooms are really long and annoying. Uh, there's a dark room in, um, I think it's Glitter Glaze Glacier, uh, that you have to light up with the Firefly power, and it's really, really long, and it's really easy to fall down and have to start over the whole thing again, so I was not a fan of that room. Um, it was okay, I suppose. Not great, though. Um... Explosives. Yeah, the game doesn't tell you what the different button weapons do on the ship. You basically just have to figure it out by trying them. Uh, you've got... Oh, actually, you could probably look at the ship to figure it out. Yeah, you can see the three cannons. They all shoot forward for some reason, but the one on the left side there with the blue is the one that shoots ice, even though it comes out the front for some reason. Uh, and then the one on this side here with the little, like, red thing underneath, that's fire. And then the middle one is the grenades or explosives or whatever they are. So yeah, it does tell you by looking, so that's cool. Did not notice that. Um. Anyway, yeah. So. I, I I do I do like this game, and I think it's a lot of fun. But I can't love it the way I love games like, like, like Mario 64 and especially Odyssey, and Sunshine and. Uh, and Banjo Kazooie, of course, and Banjo Tooie, for that matter, which is which is I think the superior game. Tooie is amazing. Um, this game, I think, it just doesn't measure up to Tooie, and or to or to Banjo Kazooie, for that matter. It's just it's just got a lot of problems that, although it plays very similar similarly to those games, it shouldn't because of the way they've handled things. They should have made it play closer to a game like Odyssey. I know that they, like, this game wasn't released after Odyssey, so they probably couldn't have gotten... I mean, maybe it was? I'm not sure. I know they were released in the same year, so I'm not sure whether this game came out before or after Odyssey. But they probably wouldn't have had time to change it if Odyssey had just come out and they were like, Oh, okay, let's make our game like that instead. Um, and people probably wouldn't have liked it that much because they want a game that plays like Banjo-Kazooie. Um, but yeah, I think it should have been more, more like Odyssey. <laughs> and yeah, so that's that's ukulele for you. Um, I would probably recommend playing this. Um, I think it's a fun game. It's just it has a lot of uh, rough edges, I would say, compared to a game like Odyssey, which I consider perfect except for the motion controls. Um, whereas this game, like, it doesn't have motion controls, but it's got a whole bunch of other. Uh, niggles that bother me. Uh, there's a lot of, um, actually I can demonstrate something else first exit this world. Uh, this particular problem was actually kind of a bigger problem in Odyssey and also it wasn't. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get there. Uh, there's one page here I haven't gotten in Hyvory Tower's hub yet and we're gonna go look at the, where, that, where you get that one. And maybe I'll get it in the review, or maybe I won't. Uh, but it's basically you've just got to wait for the loading. The loading is longer than it should be. Um, I don't know why that is. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so we're back in Highbury Towers. We head over this way. And um, we fly up to the ledge just to our left here. You can see there's a ledge up there. That leads to the last page and to a challenge you have to go through to get it. And that challenge involves sliding down a slippery slope while dodging obstacles. Uh, now, the sliding controls in Odyssey are significantly worse than the sliding controls in this game because the sliding controls in Odyssey are you have no control. Uh, basically, you just get locked into sliding and you can't do anything. But 
Odyssey never has a slide like this. It has a few like slopes that you have to roll down and the rolling controls are really good so that's fine. Um, but it doesn't have anything that compares to what we've got here which is basically a horrible obstacle course that you have to get through really really fast before the timer runs out. And while avoiding taking too many hits, of course. And it's it's horrible. Because these these it's it's bad. It's just really bad. You can control how fast you slide as well as the angle you slide at by um moving the left analogue in various directions, but you can't, you know, jump up and dodge stuff that way. And it's not fun and it's really annoying. And I'm not gonna make it and then die again. There we go, time's up. So yeah, uh, this uh, this is the one uh, pagey in the hub I haven't gotten yet, and you can see why. Um, the game expects you to have a lot of control over your your sliding, and sliding controls in this game aren't actually good, um, and it's a problem. Uh, so yeah, it it's it's a problem. <laughs> Like, if it didn't have the time limit, it would maybe be okay that you could just... Uh, or, or the time limit, but different obstacles? I don't know. It's just, it's just not fun the way it is, it's just annoying. Uh, I slowed down, but not enough, apparently. Oh my god. And you can't slide up the sides there to dodge stuff, even though it looks like you should be able to. But yeah, you get oh, you get the idea. You can see I'm mostly just damage boosting through things because doing it the proper way is just a huge hassle. That is nearly at the end, by the way, when the timer runs out. Uh, I need to get just a little bit further than that, and I can't do it. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's, that's ukulele. For some reason when the timer runs out, it doesn't actually heal you, even though it, it just could, but like, no effort whatsoever. It's, it doesn't make sense. It should heal you, but it doesn't. Uh, there's no, like, punishment for dying in this game either. Like, in Odyssey, you lose 10 coins to give, like, it's a tiny little punishment for dying because there's no lives. Um, here the, nothing at all happens, you just respawn in the room. Um, but in some ways that's more annoying because the room is often gigantic. So... That's something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's Ukulele, a game which I wanted to love and I like, but I don't love. Because it's just got too many problems compared to other collectors on platformers that I could mention and others that I have already mentioned in this video. Um, so yeah. Did I mention all the problems I was thinking of? I think I did. I should have scripted this, I didn't, I didn't do that at all, I just did it on the fly. But I, I didn't. Uh, okay, butterflies, butterflies. So... That's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed. I hope I actually managed to say something with content rather than just meaningless rambling. I tried. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you know I haven't put you off playing the game if you want to play the game. And I hope I have put you off playing the game if you really don't want to play the game and need convincing to not play it. <laughs> I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's ukulele. Bye! <laughs>